Good afternoon, everyone. How do you do? I would like to make several announcements. First, today is Mother's Day. So we should celebrate Mother's Day because the Mother Tantra and Father Tantra, the Mother Tantra, is highly revered in Tantrayana. It's the same in the heavenly realms. It's also in the in the in the world. The sufferings of the females are much more than the males. So not many people talk about Father's Day. But Mother's Day is highly respected everywhere in the world. And the greatest mother in the heavenly realm is the Golden Mother. So we highly respect all the mothers of the world. And in Tributa school, we should also respect Simu. The one who reprimanded Simu the most is X. Actually, I haven't heard Simu mentioned or reprimanded X. She rarely talked about her. But interestingly, X always reprimanded Simu. I don't know what happened here. Maybe it's that time that when she said that Simu is not the real Simu, is not the real wife of the Guru, that she was the real wife of the Guru. Because I didn't say anything, that's why she always reprimands Simu. Maybe it's because of that. No other reasons. So today, 
Did I say anything about the webcast? And also, how do you do the viewers on the webcast? Happy Mother's Day. Golden Mother is truly meaningful to me. And today's Homa was wonderful. All the spiritual experiences and the feelings are perfect. So I believe that our time in Seattle or in the United States, anywhere in the United States, will be perfect. Thank you, Golden Mother, that when I was 26, she opened my divine eye and guided me to travel throughout the universe, the heavenly realms and the earthly realms. And I had the vision of my past life I went to Maha Twin Lotus Ponds and had a vision of my past life. And she told me that your past life was the Lotus Youth of Padma Kumara of the Maha Twin Lotus Ponds. So at that time when I heard about Padma Kumara, I was very happy and coming home I told my dad and my mom. They were the first ones I told that my past life was the Lotus Youth. So my dad immediately reacted by replying that I must have been Li Jin. Li Jin. Do you know who Li Jin? is the Totha Heavenly King. So, and his third son was Lotha Natha, was, was the disciple of Tai Zhenlun. Yeah, it was a very mystical birth of Nocha. He was a meatball that had to be cut open, and that's why where Nota came out. And he had two brothers, Mu Cha and Jin Cha. So Nota, in the legend of the gods, was as a pioneer, pioneering general uh, with three heads and six arms. How did he die? Oh. When he died, his soul returned to his guru, and his guru was compassionate and used lotus so he, he, uh, the guru, uh, formed a human form from lotus blossoms. So he was born from the lotus. So that's why he was also a lotus born. That's why my dad said that he was Li Jin, which is the lotus born's father. That was the Chinese folk story. But Padmakumara is different from Nurta. 
Padma Kumara was an emanation of Amitabha Buddha from Western Paradise. And he symbolizes happiness and a play, playfulness, and the child innocence of the Bodhisattva. So the Padma Kumaras at the Maha Twin Lotus Ponds were hundreds and thousands of them, and one of them would uh, radiate a bright white light that you can see his form. And Golden Mother pointed to that, that was you. You are Padma Kumara. You were Padma Kumara. So, prior to my mentioning of Padma Kumara, nobody else ever talked about it. And ever since I started, after Golden Mother told me that you are, were Padma Kumara, then afterwards there were mentions of Padma Kumara. But uh, when the history was records were checked, there was a uh, children's rhyme in the Tang Dynasty, Padma Kumara meeting the Golden Sage. Fla blossom showers from heavens, left and right. Uh, you're listening to the marvelous sound above the clouds. I'm almost, I forget about it. Ah, oh, it's, it's, yeah. Hey, your earphone is right? talking about the bliss above all the heavens. Padma Kumara meeting the Golden Sage, and who was the Golden Sage? That was Golden Mother. So uh, flower showers falling left and right. So there was already this uh, children rhyme or children's song in the dynasty and then we've discovered more and more about Padma Kumara. It turned out there were so many Padma Kumaras. There were so many of them in the Donghuang caves. So when I started uh, to talk about Padma Kumara and I visited all the religious figures in the Buddhist field, nobody knew about it. So now I can say that Grandmaster Lu was the founder of Padma Kumara. He's a true Padma Kumara. But now, Someone is uh, someone is faking to be a Padma Kumara, and that Padma Kumara claim to be so great. When I was uh, performing ceremony at the. Taiwan Temple, everybody uh, bowed and prostrated to Grandmaster. Only one did not. And someone asked her, why didn't you bow? And she said, I'm as great as Grandmaster Lu. I'm also Padma Kumara. So, 
Master Lin Si said, "You're always talking about her, eradicating her karma. You know, but let me tell you, nobody can talk about her. There's no use for you to talk about her. Only Grand Master can or is able to talk about her." Uh, there, there's, there would be use. I would. I am reminding her to have the right thought and the right view. And please don't continue your evil games. I am reminding her to please. Come back and turn around. That to arrive at the shore, just let go of all your ghosts, and please have the correct view and thinking. You don't um, employ the ghosts, but you're being employed by the ghosts. So by having the correct view and correct thoughts and cultivate spiritually, then that would be good. If you don't practice meditation, you don't abide by the precepts, you don't have wisdom, and you continue to play the games, then you will become the ghost, a ghost. So on the deviant path, I'm trying to call you back to have the proper thoughts and not to lie and cheat again. This is the key point. See, I'm calling upon your conscience. So in the middle of the night, just ask you with clear conscience if you have, have you lied or not. If you have not, then I would respect you. But if you have lied, then please come back and turn around. The shore is behind you. So we are very grateful to the Golden Mother that at when I was 26, I opened my divine eye. I went to heaven and to the earth, and I saw everything. And she, she was my beginning in my Buddhist path. I was 26, and now I'm 73. And I never abandon or forget my beginning. My roots. I have said that when I come back, the first Homa will always be my roots, which is Golden Mother. She is my root. Without Golden Mother, there would not be Grandmaster Lu today. She's my most respected. Mother, the most, most respected, revered mother. And today I would also like to announce that at the Rainbow Temple, We will have the Twin Lotus Columbarium. It's likely that it will be completed by the end of this year. And my own mother is also here at the Rainbow Temple. My grandpa, grandma, my younger brother and my mother. They will be placed at the Twin Lotus Columbarium. And my mother is the peace bird, is an emanation of the peace bird of Kuan Yin Bodhisattva. The Kuan Yin Bodhisattva in Taiwan, there would be a bird 
that's uh, clutching on her beak, the chanting beats. So uh, the bird was an emanation of my mother. Now she's returned to the Puto mountain of the South Sea, which is the spiritual center of Kuan Yin Bodhisattva. My mother is also my respected mother. We studied uh, Buddhism together. When, we would, when I was 26, we went to the temple together to worship, to pay homage to the Buddhas, to study the Dharma, to learn the chanting. My mother went with I and my mother taught me too and my mother cultivated spiritually too and she had the transcendent power in the past in Taiwan she also gave spiritual consultation help people with talisman and with uh, curing sicknesses and she knew about which talisman would work for which sicknesses and the empowerment today would include a very useful talisman, which is the talisman of the nine phoenix breaking off the evil or the negative energy. So the empowerment includes also the, the golden light talisman and mantra of Golden Mother. So by receiving this empowerment with this mantra, you would be able to avert or to discard all the negative energy or the evil spirits. And the golden light talisman and mantra can also protect you from the invasion of evils and negative spirits. So the empowerment today is really wonderful. And next Sunday, May 21st, Sunday at 3 p.m., there will be Manjushri Bodhisattva Homa. So the wisest Manjushri. I feel that I missed something. Oh, the chart of the VIP list is not here. I've been looking for it all over my desk here on the ground. Who's responsible for this? Okay. Now it's here. So let me tell you. You need to fill the VIP list. Let's say if you're presidents or chairmen of any companies, anyone with positions, your doctor or lawyer, or your government officials, officers. Or newcomer, or you had any achievements or where you work and you have a social uh, status. You can fill, you can register yourself. Actually, anybody can, because every one of you is a VIP. Because anyone coming here has, a soul, has sown the seeds of Buddhahood. That in the future, everybody will become Bodhisattvas and Buddhas. So, because you are Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, you are VIPs in this world. And the 
wife of the Taipei rep to Sweden, the my sister Judy, the Ambassador Daniel Liao's wife. Ambassador Daniel Liao did really well in his practice. Uh, he practiced every day, once a day. And for each of our webcasts, for the group practice, Homa Dharma teachings, he would be watching, watching clearly. So he would know if Dharma sister Judy is here or not. So Ambassador Liao is always watching our webcast and he practices very well and getting better. Accountant to Buddha for school, Dharma sister Teresa and her husband Larry. Teresa is really great. His Dharma sister is marvelous. She helps all the temples accounting. So she also works at the huge accounting firm. And she understands just by gazing at it, by glancing at it. So she's helping the accountings of Trubuda School. She generates tremendous merit. And from CTI TV Taiwan, the producers for Kini Tian Sang Sintan, Dharma sister Rebecca Xiaqi. She just arrived. We didn't see her last week. And the Kini Tian Sang Sintan Illuminating the Light of Your Heart program is uh, broadly watched including in Southeast Asia. So she also has great merit. Over 10 years, she followed X, XX. So XX said, they went to the fisherman wharf and they were cook crabs crabs that were already cooked and she felt a slight stomach ache and she told X and she must then X told her to buy a crab and she said pointing to a crab this crab was dead from your past life so Dharma sister Rebecca bought all the crabs and brought it brought them back to the chapter and she kneeled down and cried yeah, that even not just tears but also mucus from the nose and kneel and bowed but the crab was dead, could not talk. So who knows why she pointed to that crab and said that was her dead from the past life. So she was crying, but then all the monks and nuns ate the crab. And then X said, that the monks and nuns, by eating the crabs, then that would generate merit to your dad, and then he can go to heaven. He could go to heaven. So Dharma sister Yaji, uh, Rebecca told me, how could I be so stupid then? How could I listen to her? I believed whatever she said. It's such a joke. Now, thinking about it, how could a dead crab talk? 
when then how could you know that the crab was her dead from the past life and she always talked about past lives and a chameleon was the brother of Reverend Lian Xu's past life and also a relative of Reverend Lian Kai so you related to Lian Kai so it was all very confusing and chaotic always talk about past lives it doesn't matter. So you have helped X a lot. That's the truth. In the dining hall earlier, I said, one day you brought a director or cameraman who was uh, taping like a medium, a medium that's jumping all over, and then asked, do you believe him? So that director just shook his head and said, oh, I can't, it's hard to believe. And then X immediately said, when the director left, And Rebecca was still there and witnessing with her own eyes to ask the ghost to catch the director and to let the director having a diarrhea. So, because he didn't believe it, so you, she made him having a diarrhea. That's not right. That can harm someone because you didn't say for how long. He could just keep having diarrhea until he dies. So coming back is good, Rebecca. And Mrs. and Dr. Ryan Chong. is also a very good doctor. He helps us a lot. There are many monks and nuns who have seen him for dental work. And his wife all came from Taiwan. Both of them are very good and also Dr. Su Lin coming from Atlanta so Sydney called you as uh, Godmother so Sydney's mom prayed to my mom for a child and I didn't know her on the, the first time we met she climbed on me and kept kissing me and kiss all over and I kissed her once and she would kiss me a hundred times and we and she had deep feeling toward me she sat in front of my door didn't want to leave the little girl and on the last day that she was leaving she didn't want to see grandmaster why didn't you want to say goodbye to grandmaster and she said no i don't want to say goodbye because then i wouldn't want to leave if i say goodbye and then she cried at the airport she cried getting on the plane so a little girl for th when we met the first time because of my mom my mom brought her here and dr gao huan xian a chinese doctor right 
or naturopathic doctor. It's very popular nowadays. There's no need for injections in naturopathic. Oh yes, you s- then I don't want to go. I thought there's no need for injections in naturopathic medicine. And also from Canada, the violinist performer, Miss Lee Huan. She has performed for us many times before. Quite a violinist. So I really like to listen to the violin. There was a professor in Taiwan that specializes in violin performance and also teaching. So today we will talk about Landi. talking about the out-of-worldly path. In terms of out-of-worldly path, the so-called the position of the school mission assemblage arises on intent, like a bird flying in the sky and other similar supernatural powers and self-mastery are attained upon differentiation in realizing the non-existence of basic roots. So this is talking about the out-of-worldly path. Actually, every one of us has a Buddha nature, and everyone's Buddha nature are equal and so why do we say that everything is equal is because the buddha natures are equal so if there is a differentiation then they, it is not buddha nature so the five dhyani buddhas vairokana buddha amitabha buddha Akshoba Buddha, Amoga Siddhi Buddha, Ratna Sambhava Buddha, the five Dhyani Buddhas, are actually completely equal. They embody five different kinds of wisdom. Uh, so, the great perfection wisdom is equal. The wisdom of equality is also equal, and all kinds of transcendental power is equal. And at that stage, it's complete self-mastery. Analogy is like a bird flying in the sky. With the sun, even when the sun shines, there's no shades, no shadows like when the eagle flies very high in the sky even under the sun there is no shadow but when the a big bird is perching on the branch of a tree then there would be shadow on the ground so that's cause and effect so the current the current causes will result will result in the closer effect and the further causes will result in the further retributions like someone did a lot of bad things evil stuff but still they have high status good home earn a lot of money and lots of wives but he's still performing a lot of evil deeds. But how come? He's still rich and beautiful 
and have beautiful wife and famous and rich. Why? Because a low flying bird would show the shadow, but the high flying bird has no shadow. So that means he has the good retribution now, but in the future he would have the bad retribution, and the bad retribution could be terrible. May be falling into the three lower realms. This is talking about the bird flying in the sky. So that's why I use this analogy that Sakyamuni Buddha mentioned. That when the sun shines, that upon a bird, when it is a great distance, there's no shadow. But in a close distance, there would be a shadow. So uh, your good retribution may appear first, although you do a lot of bad deeds in this life. You still enjoy the pleasures of the world, because the bad retribution from the bad causes that you create in this life has not matured yet. But they will come. In the worldly path, when the guru is behaving in the mundane way, it is called the position of the guru not yet guiding. So the guru may not necessarily have been reincarnated as consciousness. But many people can become this kind of guru. So although the guru cannot transform consciousness into wisdom, but they know the procedures, and we call this kind of gurus procedure guru. So they have not practiced themselves in the out of worldly path. Uh, the guru cannot transform the consciousness, but can teach. In the other holy path, the emanation is the guru of the four grounds of the secret empowerment. Oh, of the six grounds of the waste empowerment, the emanation body is the guru. The four grounds of the secret empowerment, the reward body is the guru. Of the two grounds of wisdom empowerment, the Dharma body is the guru. And the half grounds of the fourth empowerment, the nature body is the guru. So waste empowerment, secret empowerment, and then the highest secret empowerment, and lastly is the great perfection empowerment. When the guru is transforming the consciousness into wisdom, his emanation body is the six grounds of the vase empowerment. This is the vase empowerment. And his reward body so the physical body is the vis empowerment. The reward body is the four grounds of the secret empowerment. And his dharma body is the two grounds of the wisdom empowerment. So the dharma body has transformed consciousness into wisdom. And the half ground of the fourth empowerment is the nature body. Three kayas are the physical body, reward body, and dharma body. And the fourth one is the nature body, above the fourth grounds. So the half grounds of the fourth empowerment is the guru's nature body. That's how it is explained. So, 
the world is the world of materials, which is our world. That's the worldly. And out of worldly is close to empty nature. Who made that noise just now? It's okay even if you couldn't hear, that, but please be quiet. Uh, Xiaoming was eating stick in the restaurant. And then he found out that there was a fly in this beef stick and called on the waiter and said, there's a fly inside your stick. And he was, this waiter was very calm and said, oh, congratulations, you have won the price of getting another portion. In this world, there are many things that belong to the worldly dharma. Then you use the worldly dharma to resolve them. Like the sutra that we chanted last night, the filial piety sutra, the sutra about the difficulties of repaying the kindness of the parents. That's the sutra of the worldly path of the worldly dharma. The Buddha taught both worldly dharma and out of worldly dharma. And out of worldly dharma talked about the ultimate truth or the ultimate reality. And the worldly dharma belongs to the mundane and use in the world. But as Buddhists, we should respect both the worldly dharma and the out-of-worldly dharma, because the worldly dharma is the foundation. In Buddhist practice, the Buddha once said, you need to perform more and more good deeds and never perform bad deeds, because once you do bad deeds, then you would lose affinity with Buddha dharma, and you will not win lottery prizes. By performing good deeds, it's possible that you, that you have the chance to win lottery prizes or prizes like Xiaoming that would have another portion of the beef stick. If you always do bad things, and if you don't have a good a spiritual root, then you will never come across a Buddha Dharma. So you have to have the good or virtuous spiritual root in order to come across Buddha Dharma. There was a fat lady praying to the Jade Emperor. Why? I cannot lose weight no matter how I, I go on diet. And Jade Emperor said, let me check. And Jit Emperor said, okay, I discovered that when you were born, your parents prayed to me to have a fat, chubby baby. So that means you sow what you plant. That's cause and effect, karma. That's worldly dharma. So if you ask a farmer, I want to plant the bitter melon, and he planted the bitter melon seeds, the melons would be sweet? No, impossible. And if you plant the watermelon, 
and you plant the watermelon seeds. And then, is it possible when you cut the watermelon that it's bitter? No. So the worldly dharma is all in the uh, in the cause and effect or karma. So if you do a lot of bad deeds, will you encounter Buddha Dharma in the future? It's very difficult. So you sow what you plan. So good deeds will result in good retributions. Bad deeds will result in bad retributions. It's just a matter of time. That's worldly dharma. It's impossible for us to extend our lifespan, but we can broaden it. So what it means is that although it's impossible for us to grow taller, we can grow wider or fatter. Of course, this is not right. We are extending the length of our life, but we can broaden our life. So even if our life is short, we live a very rich life. That's worldly dharma. It's not talking about getting fat or taller or fatter. And the window said, I want to extend my view. And the floor said, I want to be firm and honest. And the step said, uh, watch your steps. The stairs said, and the toilet said, when it's time to let go, let go. It makes sense. In our study of the worldly dharma, it also talks about when it's time to let go, let go. Why? Like what I said last night, your status is unattainable. Your beautiful wives are unattainable. Your wealth is unattainable. What will you do in the future? Is you need to let go of everything, you put down everything in the future. And diligent in your spiritual cultivation in the out of worldly path, starting from the inner tantra. What I saw yesterday was not this. How could it become this now? What I saw yesterday. It seems like you have two different revisions of the book. Yeah. However, the worldly dharma and the out of worldly dharma are different. We, when we are diligent in our inner tantric practices, is that we walk on the out of worldly path. If you walk the worldly path, first you need to be careful about your conduct, your thoughts, your mindsets, etc. 
that belongs to the worldly dharma. And the out of worldly dharma, you focus on your uh, self spiritual cultivation because nobody can substitute for you. If anyone talking about a substitution, that's wrong. Even in karma, cause and effect, there is no substitution because the dharma boat to Buddhahood is your body, is your own body. This is very important. In order to go to the Buddha land, that in the future, in order to become a Buddha, the dharma boat that you need to write on is your own body. That's the very important key point. So only by practicing your own only practicing on your own. It's not possible for anyone to pull you up. So you attain through your own cultivation. So in the world, things that's supposed to be let go should be let go. And be diligent in your practice. Have attainments in your homa practice, in mantra chanting, and finally in samadhi. And attainment through samadhi would be the true out of worldly dharma. That's all for today. Omani Bemihon.